Today we're going to be talking about how to use a template in Pixlr Editor. So to get started, we're going to open image from computer. And I'm going to find, quickly find our template. And I'm using a PSD format um, real quick just to give you an idea. There are several different formats. There's the page format, and that's for a different program if you use um, memory suite software. You can use the templates in that. PNG, this just has each individual layer that you can pull in and do that way, one layer at a time. Or PSD and TFF, TIF are files where they're all in one document and they're layered. So for this program, we're going to use the PSD and we're going to open it up. Now it's just going to take a minute to open because it is a very large file. Um, but this will give me a chance to kind of talk a little bit about uh, templates and why I use them. I love templates, I love making them, and I love using them in my scrapbooking. Um, they're just a great springboard into um, starting a layout, giving me a nice format to work with. It gets, gets things started and then I can add to it, detract, take away from it, whatever I want as I go along. So. I use a lot of templates and I used to design a lot more templates than I have recently, but I may have to change that. Um, if there seems to be a demand for more templates, I will make more. Okay, so here we go. As you can see in our layers over here, we have all the layers. Now I didn't bring the shadows over, but that's okay. Um, it, it kind of works differently in Pixlr than it does in Photoshop, so it takes away the shadows. But we're just going to start on this background layer and to pull in a paper to go on top of this layer we're going to click layer open image as layer go to our paper file and bring in this blue one okay there you go as you can see there that layer is on top of our background layer and we really don't need to do anything more with that at this point because the background layer doesn't ever need to be shadowed. So next we're going to place something in, on top of this blue paper layer, this paper piece here. So again we're going to do layer, open image as layer. And let's bring in this white. It's kind of a white graph paper. Okay, so now we've got it there. So in Pixlr this works completely different than Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. So in Pixlr to clip this top paper to it you make active or highlight the paper piece below and then you go to edit select pixels and it's put the marching ants right here around this paper piece now we're going to go up and highlight our paper piece because in essence we now have the shape we want it to cut to so now we need to tell it to basically cut it so um, then what we're going to do is click invert selection and what invert selection does is originally with the marching ants it was just around this part so if we had clicked delete it would have taken just this piece here which is not what we want to do we want to take everything else except for that piece so inverting it puts the marching ants around the whole outside and here and it means that the part that is active is all of this of the blue stuff so now I click delete and there you go. It takes away all of that and I can go back up to edit, deselect all and the marching ants are gone. Now what I would want to do at this point is if I were going to add a shadow, I would add that shadow to the paper piece below. And I don't want to dwell a lot on shadows, but I just want to give you an idea of what it looks like. So if we add a drop shadow, which the Pixlr drop shadows, the defaults are horrendous. So I'm just going to take down this quickly. And again, you can watch for my video that gives a little more about this to make it look a lot more realistic. Okay. So now we've added our shadow, but as you notice, we didn't add the shadow to the top paper, we added it to the paper piece. It doesn't, wouldn't do any good to add it to this other um, 
well actually in this program it really wouldn't matter because at this point now that we've clipped it or cropped that photo to that paper we could delete the um, paper piece and we still have here in place and then we would actually apply the shadow to that one so that's probably a better way to deal with it just so that you don't have so many layers going on um, now let's go up you do the same for a photo you would just um, so let's say let's work with the photo where we want it to be a certain size so what we would do there is we would do layer open image as layer go to my photos bring in this cute little picture of my son with his cat okay now what we want to do is we want to make this smaller because that's going to be way too big for any of these um, photo spots so to do that um, we go to edit free transform and we use shift so that it does it in perspective and we don't lose a bunch of you know we don't have it all wonky and that's a real term I promise <laughs> okay and then once we have it where we like it we apply the changes and then we can slide it over let me make sure which photo spot this is so it's for this photo spot right here so we probably would want it even smaller um, so again we just go edit free transform there click it it gives us this little menu click yes and move it down okay now it's kind of hard to tell if we have it in just the right place so what we want to do is change the opacity on this for just um, a few minutes so to do that let's see oh this doesn't really give us Okay, so we're going to do Oh, for some reason I thought this had a way to lower the opacity, but I guess it does not. So, we're just going to kind of guess and do our best with it. And we're going to go to photo and we're going to do edit select pixels and i guess this kind of gives us a good guess so we can put our layer and activate the layer above here and we can move things over um, if i wanted to make it smaller again i could but this will tell me that what i have in the, uh, within the marching ants is what i'm going to have as my finished photo so then we do um, edit invert selection and delete and then edit deselect all okay now I can take this photo spot and drag it to the trash so that I just have my photo and from there I can add a layer style by, or drop shadow by going right clicking layer style drop shadow double click on drop shadow to change the opacity of this and I'm just gonna okay and there I've added my photo 
and I can move it around. It's nothing stuck there, but there we go. Now as we move further up, we have, for example, the leaves layer. So we have a leaf right here. Um, and so we make sure that that's right above it and we go to image or to layer, open images layer. And we're going to go to the element for this kit. And all the information of the products I'm using that are available in my store can be found in the blog post at my website where you found this video. Okay, so obviously our leaves are way, way too big. So we're gonna go back to edit, free transform. And we'll make them smaller. And we can also turn them with this. See how it, when I get close here, it turns, gives the little turn thing. So we're gonna turn and then click on them, apply it, yes. If I didn't like the way that it turned out, I could go and say no, and it would just put it back to where it was before. Okay, now we have our leaves in place. We have no use for this leaves layer, so we just drag it to the garbage, and we're back on our leaves. And again, we can um, right-click, choose layer styles, apply a drop shadow, and so on. And you just continue element by element to work your way up through the, the layout. And that's it for today.